I know hairstyles here that cost more than some of my friends' bright price. Hello, Sunny Bonani, beautiful people. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for clicking to watch this video. If you are new here, my name is Tenjiwe. I am a South African content creator currently based in the UK. And in this video, I just want to correct some misconceptions that a lot of Africans have about leaving Mother Africa to come and work abroad and to especially to come and work in the UK because I'm currently in the UK. So this is going to be specific to the UK. But if you do live in any other country outside Africa, please do leave a comment and let me know if these are similar to where you live or if you think where you are it is better than here because these are going to be the truths that nobody wants to tell you about life abroad for an African. So let's go. Number one, your immigration status. You do not just get your tourist visa, get on the flight, come to the UK and get a job. You need to have the right immigration status. You need to have a work visa. You need to have a work permit or you need to have maybe ancestry visa, which is a long story for another day, because you know, if you are African, if you are black like me, you ain't got no ancestor in the UK. So you know who that visa was made for. If you need to come here, please, please, please make sure that you do your research about uh, the visa that you can qualify for. Cause I have seen so many people, even in professions that they do give visas or immigration status to or work permits to coming here wrongly informed and ending up not being able to get the jobs that they are qualified to do. And especially in medical professions like nurses, doctors, it is much easier if you apply while you are at home. Do not leave Africa to come here and think you're going to sort things out when you get here. It is much more difficult. I've seen doctors cleaning toilets and all they say is I'm a doctor in my own country. In your own country, not here, because here they do not care about your qualification. All they want is your immigration status. Yes, you can come here. There are many ways of sorting out your visa. It is not easy. It was much easier back in the day. Uh, that's a, a video for another day because if we start with that, we're never going to finish with this video. But yes, point number one, your immigration status. It is not a matter of packing, buying a ticket and getting your visitor's visa or your tourist visa coming here and thinking, Bob's your uncle. No. Sort out your immigration status. Do your research. And if you come here with a student visa thinking that you can come here with a student visa and work, no as much as they allow you to work the hours are limited during school term and if you work limited hours in the uk uh, life is going to be very hard unless you come from a very rich family and you are really here just to study you are not using your student visa as means to get a job and this leads me to point number two which is accommodation accommodation is very very expensive in the uk a majority of foreigners do not have their own places they live in rented places that they share with other people very very few people who are not from the uk have their own places it is expensive for example where i live just to rent a single bedroom in somebody's house will set you off about 650 pounds per month. 650 pounds per month, for those of you who are in South Africa, is about 13,000 rands. And that's a single room. That's a single room, sharing with other people. You don't have your own bathroom. You don't have your own uh, kitchen. And I even know people who do not even have access to the kitchen because people who rent out their houses will even rent out the dining room, the sitting room. And sometimes you need to use that to access the kitchen. Guys, it is not easy and it is expensive. If you have relatives who live in the UK, please be easy on them. Things are not easy. And also, a lot of people's story is when I came to Heathrow, my cousin didn't pick up the phone. 
that's because your cousin did not tell you that Mzala, I actually share a house or share even my bedroom with other people and they do not allow us to bring visitors. So he is embarrassed or she is embarrassed to now pick up the phone and say, find a hotel, find a hotel. I cannot help you. And some people actually live at work. There are so many people who come from Africa and actually in order to save money, they do what is called live in work where you live where you work. And sometimes they do not tell you at home and what you see on Instagram is different from the reality. So they cannot have you come and visit them. So next time you have someone you know in the UK, make sure, make sure that you are 100% sure that they will pick up their phone that they will pick you up. And I know if you have ever lived abroad, you either have experienced this or know someone who did, please leave a comment down below about the stories of people who arrived in the UK or any other country abroad only to find that their contact was nowhere to be found. It disappeared into thin air. Number three, chances of you getting the job you are qualified for or you have experience in are very, very slim almost zero percent unless you are in the medical profession it is almost impossible unless you were recruited at home even people who studied here africans who came here studied here find themselves either unable to get jobs that they qualify for or working under such uncomfortable conditions where they feel that they do not belong that they end up just doing your basic minimum wage jobs just to keep bread on their table so guys once again be easy on people who live abroad it is not easy it is not easy for everyone a lot of people here are on minimum wage but when it comes to bills and expenses it is not minimum it is very very expensive and it looks very attractive and it's like oh my god i'm gonna earn this much money when we tell you oh if you if you are a cleaner in the uk you're gonna earn uh, forty thousand rands a month but they don't tell you twenty thousand is gonna be for your rent uh, another five thousand is gonna be for your transport uh, you know it, it 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 just accumulates it's a lot of money so be careful and make sure you do not leave a job the, or a career in Africa thinking you are coming here to make a better life for yourself. Number four, homesickness is real. Loneliness is real, guys. It is lonely in the UK. People are not nice. I don't know my neighbors. A lot of people do not know they are neighbors. You are lucky if you live in a place where it's just people who just like to get together and drink. You most likely to know your neighbors if you are from those neighborhoods. But even them, chances of you just going to borrow salt. I, 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 I miss just going to my neighbors to borrow sugar. I miss neighborhood gossip. I miss knowing who my neighbors are. And here you will not get that. I am very, very sorry. That does not exist in the UK. It is lonely. And imagine being in a country and not being able to go home. If people can't attend funerals, I've seen someone who's been here for about 15 years, has lost two children, both funerals. She had to watch on WhatsApp through WhatsApp video. It is hard, guys. That's pre-COVID. Don't even talk about COVID because even if we, you have your correct immigration status, you can travel home. How much is it to get a ticket? If you, if, if you haven't planned for it, most people plan like from January that I'm going home in December. If someone dies in June, chances of you going are very slim. Be kind to your relatives who cannot come to funerals. People here have lost husbands. People here have lost children. People here have lost wives and they are unable to go home. I actually have you know, a very sad story of a lady who lost her husband. They both lived here in the UK, but it was so difficult for her and so expensive for her to fly him out, to fly the body out, because it's expensive to fly the body out, that she had him cremated. And when she got home and they were like, oh, where's that body? She put her hand inside her bra and took him out inside a plastic bag, guys. Because she had him cremated, put him in a plastic bag and brought him home, because it was the cheapest way at least she only had to buy her own flight ticket and didn't have to buy any repatriation flight tickets for the body. 
it is difficult here guys it is difficult a lot of people get buried like celebrities in africa they get buried with donation money it is not easy if you are going to leave home make sure you've got your mask of sign or your life cover your life insurance make sure you have your funeral plan in order because once you get here things become very hard some people have lost money because they come here join a funeral plan with the bank when the time comes for them to be buried the bank is like aha uh -huh, you are here illegally so we cannot help you so be careful be careful and know that loneliness is real homesickness is real and you will miss out on all the important milestones of your children all the important events in your family you will miss out just for the sake of being here living in a shared bedroom sleeping in a single bed it's not easy you number five african food is expensive guys african food is expensive in the uk in fact i'm gonna do one of these days i will do a video and show you the prices of south african food how expensive it is here it is hard to get and when you get it it is super expensive and british food is bland and it's not tasteful especially for us who come from an african background you just want food from home and unfortunately unlike the indians and the chinese where you know wherever you go whichever country you go to you will find an indian restaurant you will find an indian market africans we are not that business minded we have not promoted our african cuisine so it is very difficult to find african food and when you do find it it is very expensive number five doing hair is very expensive and all the white people i have been to to do my hair have made a mess so much so that i have learned to do my own hair i do my own hair i braid my own hair because it is difficult and for us who live away from pity pity of the city it is harder to get to places where you can find black people who can do your hair and when you do find them it is ridiculously expensive it is expensive to do your hair in england and if you do find someone who can do your hair you are very lucky but you are gonna pay i know hairstyles here that cost more than some of my friends bright price it's expensive to do our hair in england that's why we end up like this number seven the uk weather oh my god remember what i told you about the people the neighbors the weather is just as gray and unfriendly the weather is not good the weather is not good it rains it rains a lot and when it's cold it's very cold the weather is just extreme and make sure if, especially if you come in winter if you come when it's winter here make sure you have the right stuff make sure you have the right clothes because winter will humble you uk winter will humble you and you always have to carry an umbrella inside your bag because you just don't know when it's gonna start raining and the weather has this tendency of changing at least four times a day so you have to layer layer your clothes because you don't know you leave home it's cold and during the day it rains and the afternoon it's hot so yeah just 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 make sure that you are prepared for a weather that is not gonna please you number eight driving in the uk is so different from driving in any other african country the roads are small here the roads were made for horse-drawn carriages they were not made for cars that's why they have tiny cars so you have to get used to a different way of driving number nine car insurance is compulsory you know how at home car insurance is only for a car that you just bought brand new from the shop like three years after three years you don't have car insurance here it is compulsory you can go to jail they can take away your license your driving license will be gone if you don't have your car insurance and the car insurance is not on the car it is on the person who drives the car so if you come here and you're like ah sis can i take your car just to the shop and i say no it's not because i am mean it's because in order for you to drive my car you have to be insured you as a person not the car you as the person must be insured so if you are visiting someone in the uk and you are visiting them for four days if you want to be 
able to drive their car for those four days, please make sure you insure yourself so that you do not get them into trouble and you do not get yourself into trouble. Number 10, church. Church is boring in the UK. Church is boring. I went twice, I fell asleep. I'm not even a church person. I just went because I had friends who were going to church and I was visiting them and they said, let's go to church. I was like, why not? Let's go. I fell asleep within the first five minutes. Church is not like African church. There's no Holy Ghost. There's no uh, singing. And it, like church is boring, guys. The one good thing about their church, it does not last long. In an hour, church is finished. But prepare to be bored. And leave all your Sunday best clothes in your home country with people who will use them. Here, they do not care about looking good for Jesus. Here, they wear their jeans and go to church. They wear their shorts and go to church. Like, it's not like in Africa. There is no Sunday hats and Sunday dress and dress in the coats and I want to look best, the best for Jesus. No, church is boring. Unless, once again, you find a church that is an African church that has been opened by Africans for African. But such churches are few and far between, so it's difficult to find one. So if you are a church-going person and you are about to leave your home country, please make sure you go to church Monday to Monday because you will miss it when you get here. So guys, those were just some of the things that I thought I would make clear before you leave Africa. So guys, my advice would be if you have a job, you have a career, and you have a family, you have people you love, stay in Africa, try and make it work. Let us try and make Africa work and let us not all hurry into coming into these countries. I know you guys will be asking, but why are you staying there? That I will address in a different video. And there are some good things about staying here, which I will also address in my next video. And please, please, please do. Do your research before you leave your home country. Make sure you do your research before you come here so that you know what to expect, so that you are prepared both mentally, financially, and physically because it is not as easy as people think it is. Anyway, please do comment down below and let me know if you've had an experience of living abroad, if you found this video helpful, and if you think there are things that I either missed out, exaggerated, or that you find as an advantage, which I have mentioned as a disadvantage of coming here. But next week, I will be doing a video and telling you some of the pros about moving to the UK. Anyway, I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, share the video, and please do watch my other videos. Bye. See you in the next video.